Tokens is a people-powered universal cryptocurrency service that makes it easy and safe for users to interact with the new economy. Bitcoins is a secure universal mobile wallet that is designed to hold a wide variety of cryptocurrencies. Today we have a great opportunity to speak with Shingo Lavin, the founder and CEO of Bitcoins. Hello, Shingo. Hello, Lena. How did you come up with the idea of creating Bitcoins? Well, it really started about two years ago. Uh, my aunt came to me and asked me to invest in Ethereum. And, you know, this was back when Ethereum's price was pretty low and I couldn't quite explain to her how to do it. You know, I've been invest investing and mining for years in the space um, and really love it, but realize that most people find the space really daunting beyond, you know, just using Bitcoin. Um, the entire cryptocurrency philosophy uh, started by Satoshi was to democratize finance and for everyone but it's really technically inaccessible to the average person. So kind of what we thought was, why can't uh, we create, uh, make buying cryptocurrency really simple for everyone? And when we start explaining cryptocurrencies to people, like their coins and tokens, it's a really simple analogy that everyone seems to understand. So we thought, okay, well, why can't we create a super simple smart wallet that lets you buy baskets of coins? And everyone seemed to understand this, and we got a lot of interest. So we began to bounce this idea off of uh, friends and family, and before I knew it, um, we had this very powerful idea here. Can you please tell us a few words about the mission of the project? Uh, sure. Our mission is really simple. Uh, we want to make cryptocurrencies really easy to use. Um, we'd like to make the analogy of kind of building out infrastructure for the internet um, in the early 80s, and the technical underpinnings uh, for the technology is there, and they're really poised to change the world as we know it. Uh, they just need some packaging and infrastructure to bring it from the early uh, technical enthusiasts to the mass adoption phase. And we want to accelerate the adoption of blockchain technology and make finance accessible to everyone. How did Bitcoins come together? Can you tell us about your team also? Sure. Um, there were kind of three things that uh, happened. Um, so kind of the first was what I talked about already, that I got some requests you know, from people in my family to buy Ethereum and other cryptocurrencies because they couldn't figure out how to do, the, do it themselves. And I realized kind of the space needed to be a little more consumer friendly. Um, and then the second thing that happened was uh, a really amazing coincidence that my uh, academic advisor, uh, Morris, happened to be a world-class Ethereum smart contracts expert. Um, I met him through my uh, computer science studies at Brown, and he's really amazing. He's won the Godel Prize and he's written a number of really influential papers, um, one of which is on parallelizing smart contracts and scaling the Ethereum network. And he was really open and approachable to this idea. And I began talking to him about the technology and how it could actually work in the back end and we could make this uh, idea a reality. Um, and the third thing that kind of happened was my dad had been working in mobile micropayments for a while and uh, consumer services industry with major global carriers for years. And, and he and his team had worked with a lot of big brands like Pepsi, Chiquita and Universal. And his team really understood the security uh, scalability, you know, how to build a mobile friendly system. And they agreed to join the project and begin building out the platform. So we have a really unique team like uh, that really unlike any other in the crypto space. We have um, a diverse set of talents and we've been working really hard over the last few months to flesh out this idea and make it a uh, reality that we can share with the community. It's really exciting. What are the advantages of the platform among others? Uh, we try to boil it down to three things. Uh, accessibility, usefulness and security. Um, one of the biggest barriers that a lot of people have is that um, the space is really confusing which is largely de uh, due to the lack of kind of understanding and technical know-how and this like hodgepodge of coins and tokens out there. Um, so by simplifying the UI without sacrificing the financial control that uh, cryptocurrencies provide, we hope that users will find our, the Bitcoin's platform really appealing. Um, secondly, we kind of hope to provide services and infrastructure that the market needs. Um, our dynamic asset allocations allow users to really rapidly diversify and hold a variety of crypto assets safely and easily with variable levels of risk. Um, our long-term vision is to use the liquidity generated from the automatic gas conversions on the on the Bitcoin's platform along with the dynamic asset allocations to jumpstart what we're calling the digital liquidity network, which will allow anyone to transfer value of any form across tokens, um, enabling a global payment system. Um, and you can kind of think of it as sort of a ripple for consumers. 
Tell us about the community consensus right. piece. Um, this is a really big piece of the platform. Um, we're letting uh, the community rate individual to uh, coins and tokens on quality and risk. Um, there will be a few quant dimensions in there, um, including technology, uh, market potential, community support, uh, governance, and active development. And it's sort of like star ratings on the uh, on the App Store, but a little bit deeper. Um, so then when people put together their allocations in the different baskets of coins, they understand the community consensus of their basket around the risk and quality. And this uh, will be really interesting and valuable data for the crypto community and really help newer consumers especially make uh, better decisions when it, become, when it comes to their cryptocurrencies. The question of safety is crucial for cryptocurrency sphere. How did you plan to provide the security of funds? Yeah, this is a really great question and uh, one that we really have to take seriously when, um, when thinking about the technical and the legal architecture. Um, Coinbase keeps 98% of their funds in cold storage and we plan on doing uh, something similar. Bitcoins is not a day trading platform, it's a kind of buy and hold platform for the long term. And we want, we will definitely let people move their positions, but we want to do it in these kind of bulk trades to get uh, the community the best conversion rates. Um, doing it this way means that we're going to have to uh, put more layers of individual security in place, but it will make the securing the funds a lot easier. Um, our team also has their own data centers, so we won't be putting anything out in the cloud that's been a you know major source of security breaches over the years. And um, as much as we can, we'll be using cold offline storage. Um, and then kind of the other piece is liquidity. Uh, Bitcoin will be using many of the tokens available for liquidity um, and to balance the portfolios and enable this uh, free global transfer of value. And all transfers on the liquidity network are backed one to one by their underlying assets. So there's no leverage like a traditional bank. And trades between Bitcoin users will be settled rapidly and can be posted to the blockchain for posterity and transparency. Um, furthermore, we're creating a customer service layer on top of these features to build uh, user confidence in this. So we're not uh, we're not for people who want to manage all their own keys on their own computer, and, and we don't want to pretend that we're trying to do that. Um, but we are services that make cryptocurrencies really accessible and easy to use, and we hope that the community will help keep us accountable. Would it be handy for a normal user? Can you please describe shortly how it works? Sure. Um, so when we first launch, the user will be able to deposit funds into their account using a few methods, probably um, Bitcoin, Ether, and Bitcoin tokens, uh, which would uh, comprise kind of the cryptocurrency equivalent of the money market. Um, that we see in uh, kind of stock brokerages. And eventually, eventually we want to support fiat currency as well. And these funds will be uh, liquid into a variety of different currencies, which will allow the user to have this one-click diversification feature into all these different coin baskets. So this means that it's really easy for participants to gain exposure to the market. And we've already seen some of our test back baskets outperform the Bitcoin benchmark due to their diversity and um, exposure to uh, overall exposure to the market and the Bitcoin's token is used to pay service fees on the Bitcoin's platform with automatic gas conversions generating the liquidity for the token uh, the experience for the user will be much akin to a fidelity where people where we do all the heavy lifting on the back end and make the front end really simple for the consumer tell us please more about diversified baskets what will they include and how many baskets do you plan to offer so technically um, we are offering an infinite number of baskets. When a user wants to allocate their funds, they will be greeted with a basket creation wizard, uh, which will guide them through the process of creating an asset allocation. Um, we'll have a number of different pre-made basket templates, um, one of which will be the Bitcoin's index, which, which is designed to track the industry as a whole, um, which users can clone, diversify into, or change to create their own uh, custom allocations. Uh, we'll, just, we'll try to support as many coins as possible in the universal wallet, but this will largely depend on liquidity and uh, order depth on different exchanges. Um, and we have a, a few different categories of baskets. Um, you know, we have big cap coins, which are coins above one billion dollars in market cap, uh, privacy coins, uh, you know, like Monero, Pivx, Zcash, Dash. Um, there are fog computing coins. We're kind of seeing this new sector of the market open up. Um, which run platforms like uh, MadeSafe and Sia Coin, um, and ICO baskets, which will include all of the newer tokens, which we'll be offering in partnership with Token Market. 
Um, so there's there's a little bit of ev- something for everyone. And all the baskets are 100% transparent in terms of their quality, allocations, performance, and fees. And they're completely modular and changeable into and can be reallocated at any time. The Bitcoin stock and sale will start on the 28th of June. What do you expect from the ICO and what are the plans for future? Well, we want to really ground our crowd sale in fundamentals, um, which will hopefully kind of be a breath of fresh air from the uh, speculative valuations that we've been seeing witnessing recently. Um, so we're handing over the valuation aspect to the community by um, by setting a minimum goal of 5,000 Ether, which will be enough to fund development for an estimated two years, and a goal of raising 40,000 Ether, which will allow us to scale our development efforts and accelerate our roadmap. Um, all the unsold tokens will be burned, which is why we're saying the community decides our valuation. So no matter what, uh, 35% of the tokens, 30% for the crowd sale, 5% for the bounties and um, uh, and referrals are going to the public. And we want to build out the infrastructure that brings cryptocurrency to the people and democratizes finance for everyone. Thank you for an interesting conversation. We wish you good luck and hope for the success of your ICO. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you taking the time to talk with me.